What's up, guys? This is Group 39. We're going to present the topic of virtual reality. We will use VR for short in the following presentation. So here's the introduction for virtual reality. It's an interactive computer-generated experience taking place within a simulated environment. that incorporates meaning auditory and visual, but also other types of sensory feedback like haptic. Uh, and VR is awesome. VR opens the world of possibilities by creating the sensation of being entirely transported into a virtual three-dimensional world. VR provides a visual and immersive appearance that traditional screen-based media cannot. And here's one of the devices for VR called PlayStation VR. And the second one is called HTC Vive. And also, here's another, another one called Oculus Rift. And then we're going to talk about VR applications. And uh, we're going to talk about in four aspects. The first one's VR in games. And here's the demo. So the second one is we are in medical care, and we are also plays a very important role in the medical field, bringing great pleasure to patients and doctors. The following are three aspects about how medical VR is transforming patient lives and how doctors work. The first one is VR makes wearing surgery more convenient, which provides a good condition for doctors, patient family, and even medical students to participate in the surgery directly. And this is the video The, this is the video for uh, is an operation recorded by 360 degree camera and others can join the VR videos in real time to experience this operation. So the next step for you and next step for us is to get you into the prep room and ready to go. So hopefully we'll see you soon, all right? Great, thanks. Thank you. The team is currently going through the World Health Organization surgical checklist. The checklist identifies three phases of an operation, each corresponding to a specific period in the normal flow of work, before the induction of anesthesia, before the surgical procedure begins, and before the patient leaves the operation. So secondly, VR also can reduce the patient's pain and anxiety in the hospital. Children can get rid of the hospital environment through VR technologies, which means live contact, contact possible with the camera at the patient's home, school, or special occasions such as birthday, celebration, or football games. And for patients who have who are experienced uh, chronic diseases, we are as fun to the long and boring treatment live in hospital. Here's a video about how it works. Virtual reality is a way to immerse people in alternative worlds. So we use goggles that transport people to an entirely different universe, a different planet, a different environment, places that we've never seen or been before, maybe even never imagined before. We meet patients where they are, we come to their hospital room, and uh, we fit them with the goggles, make sure they're, they're snug and comfortable, and then we bring them through the video experiences. One video brings people to Iceland, where they get in a helicopter and they can explore these unbelievable topography. So last but not least, VR can speed up recovery after a stroke. Although they might not carry out, carry out the actual movement, it can enhance attention, motivation, and engagement with vir virtual and auditory feedback.
The virtual reality treadmill has two belts, one for each foot, and a base that moves to mimic different surfaces. It can also react and adjust to a patient's movement, and a wraparound video screen completely immerses the patient into a real-life scenario. So VR has the potential to change multiple industries. Also next, education is another area that has already begun to harness the, the power of virtual reality. Only a few children are experienced so far, but VR is likely to be, to do, to be something that the children born this decade and could consider standard once they reach high school and not just for entertainment. There are three examples explain, explaining how the VR influences education. So the picture shows that VR devices can create a virtual model of what they have seen and were able to have another complete look around, which engages students to understand these constructions easily. For those of us born in different generations, doing something as technical as this at such a young age seems impressive. However, with an increasing dependency on technical skills in the work workspace, it is considered more important that than ever that children start learning to operate various kinds of technology from these early years. The second example is new ways of learning. Some people learn better than by reading texts, others by following instructions. For virtual learners, VR is a more than welcome addition to, uh, to the education. Rather than looking out the window, students could potentially see exactly what their teacher is talking about. So the last example is one example pa partnership is between Next Galaxy and Miami Children's Hospital, which is working on incorporating assessments into medical VR models and creating situation where particip participants are required to make decisions about certain techniques. As well, medical students have been able to watch live broadcasts of simulated surgeries, getting real world experience that they wouldn't normally get in until late in their training. So here's the demo for VR indication. It's, it's not just something that's a bit different. This is a new medium. It's not what we've been traditionally doing. I think if we can turn learning into a hobby, I think people are going to really, really enjoy Engage. It's going to be extremely disruptive and exciting times ahead. Immersive VR education is dedicated to transforming the way educational content is delivered globally using virtual reality technology. We design uh, educational experiences like the Apollo 11 experience, and then we also have our own education platform called Engage. Essentially, Engage is a distance learning tool um, that we can use to basically put educators and students together in the same room with digital representations of themselves so that they can focus on sort of any topic that they want. You can have your teacher, you can have your students with you, and you can go anywhere in the world or beyond and learn about really anything there is to learn by immersing yourself in that educational experience. It is going to help so many people that have difficulties with the current educational modes that we use. It's a very exciting new platform and a new medium to explore. And so, next is we are in military. It is a known fact that the military training is time-consuming, co costly, and potentially dangerous. So we use VR in here. It has been adopted by the military, including all three services, Army, Navy, and Air Force. And also it provides not only a better way of soldiers training, but also a treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder. So diverse scenarios can be tailored to different service needs, with programs supporting skill drills, physical fitness, and other key boot camp experience reducing the number of instructors. And the simulators is set up to match a real aircraft. The fittings, equipment panel, and other elements are in exactly the same place as they would be on a real aircraft. The simulator is used to train flights across all branches of the forces. The training includes teaching flight skills, how to deal with an emergency and communication with ground control. And next, um, the VR treatments for PTSD, it helps soldiers suffering from battlefield trauma and other psychological conditions to learn how to deal with this, their symptoms in a safe environment. The idea is opposing to the triggers for soldiers' condition which they gradually adjust to. This has the effect of decreasing their symptoms and enable them to cope to new or 
unexpected situations. And here's demo four. We are in military. You can go into this this system and train on any kind of environment, urban, woodland, desert, depending on the, the needs of the leadership and what they want to train for. Stimulus. Head, arm, and leg sensors detect your motion. So whatever it's coded to be, whether it's coded to be a grenade or binoculars or whatever, so you hold it there, it activate, and you just make the motion of throwing the grenade, and just you'll, you'll throw a grenade. To move in the virtual space, the only thing you don't do, you don't actually have to move your feet. I turn my head to see, to look around in the environment. I turn my body to move my body in the environment. But the actual act of walking or running or crawling, there's a joystick on the front hand grip of the weapon, and that's that's how you move it. As for the gun, there's a sensor on the buttstock, so when you're calibrating, it registers when you bring it up. When you press it against your shoulder, the scope appears. The 15 pound backpack processes each action, sending soldiers' data out to a network so they can operate as a team. Guys outside the room with your arm too. You're talking to each other, you're moving in real time, you're seeing what they do, they see what you do, just like you would in any other kind of virtual environment. Although it seems like a video game, virtual missions can make live training more efficient, saving time and money. So this is demo of VR and uh, VR is the future. It allows people gain real experience from virtual world. And apart from the, the four specs that we mentioned before, and there are also some other uh, scenarios that we use the VR to improve our life. So hope you guys enjoy this watching. And...